Hey my little sunflowers and welcome back to Compito, uh, my Animal Crossing island. And today we're going to be building the area that will eventually become Nook's Cranny. So we're working on the area that's behind my Kyoto inspired area at the moment. I wanted to kind of have Nook's Cranny up on the third level so I'm just here building some cliffs on top of um, the second level of cliffs that I already did off camera and you'll notice that um, when I'm building these cliffs I had to kind of go down to the second level or like the very bottom level and flesh out the second level of cliffs and then go back and build more of the third level and so forth um, so it was quite a long like kind of back and forth kind of process but um, I think it turned out well in the end. There's a lot of cliff building in this video, so um, I'm just going to let my little Animal Crossing <laughs> villager do the work and then I'll come back in to explain kind of more of what I'm doing a bit later. There's actually quite a lot of stuff that I've done on Compito off camera. I think I was really focused on filming absolutely everything for Purin Bay and I started to not like not enjoy filming but I started to kind of be kind of unkind to myself about like making sure that I was filming absolutely everything that I was doing on my island. And I don't know, I, I like to play Animal Crossing just kind of in my downtime as well as making YouTube videos. Uh, so there are a quite a few smaller areas on my island that I have done off camera. And um, honestly, Compito is really, really almost finished. So um, you all will be able to see those little areas when I post my dream address of this island. Um, Hopefully sometime next month, I think. Um, it all depends on my recovery from top surgery and everything like that. And speaking of top surgery, um, when this video goes live, this video will be the very last uh, video that I will be uh, premiering. Uh, pre uh, <laughs> words. Premiering um, before my top surgery. Um, and the other videos that will be going up... Um, on the Mondays kind of following there'll probably be about two probably two videos um that I'll be posting that won't be premieres um and I hope you guys can understand that because obviously I'll be um focusing on my healing and my recovery um during that time I'd like to focus more on on my health and my healing rather than um kind of forcing myself to be sat in front of my computer um while a video goes live so I, yeah i really hope you guys can understand that so yeah at the time that this video goes live uh it will be two days until my top surgery uh so <laughs> if you want um please go ahead and follow me on twitter because i will be posting on there still um i will make sure to keep you guys updated as to what's happening and how i'm getting on with everything so yeah uh, the link to my Twitter, as always, will be uh, in the link in the description, and it's also uh, linked to my actual channel. So um, th there'll be a link that you can click somewhere if you wanted to follow me on Twitter and find out how I'm doing. So basically what I'm doing is I am decorating Nook's, the area that will be Nook's Cranny, but I'm also kind of decorating the area that's below it kind of leading on from where Kabuki's house is. Uh, obviously Kabuki is one of the houses that I used in the Kyoto build. So I kind of wanted to decorate his house a little bit. You saw me just now placing down the path that leads to where Nook's Cranny will be. Um, 
And do bear in mind that um, this video was actually filmed before the uh, update was released. So at this point, I only have 50 custom design slots. So you won't see me using the, the grass flowery path that I used in my last video, which was Toby's house speed build. I actually filmed this one and the video that's going up next before I filmed uh, Toby's house. Um, I just wanted to put out Toby's house uh, like as soon as possible because I was really excited about it. Um, so you'll see here, I'm still using my Ghibli path and I don't have as many designed codes that I'm using. Uh, so hopefully that's okay. Um, hopefully you guys can understand that. So I finally placed my shop and it's all done. So yeah, I'm just deciding kind of how I want to decorate. As you guys know, this island is kind of meant to be a whimsical Japanese inspired forest, rural sort of thing. <laughs> I'm really not sure to be honest. I'm just decorating how I want to decorate. Um, so I want it to have some kind of city elements. Um, as you can see like with the utility poles and the drink machines um but still kind of keeping that foresty kind of vibe and i think i did well with that here um you kind of have to wander through a little teeny forest to get to nook's cranny so yeah i definitely feel like decorating and placing items is the thing that i struggle with the most when i'm decorating an area because like especially when it's just all just open I just feel like, oh my god, like, what do I do? Like, <laughs> where do I put things? I don't know. <laughs> so just on either side of the incline here, I decided to sort of mirror uh, what I would, what I did on the other side uh, and put the snack machine here. Just kind of like as an, almost like an entrance way to where the shop will be. I'm really liking using the um, red and the white drink machines and snack machines at the moment because I think they look really good. Um, and I guess red and white are kind of my colour scheme on this island, uh, as well as pink. I guess if, if there was a colour scheme, I don't think I'm really going for one, but yeah. <laughs> They're the colours that I'm using most on my island. And of course, I'm doing the little tree trick here. Um, I didn't realise that I couldn't plant it so close to Nook's Cranny, so I had to go back and extend the cliff and then try again. Uh, but we get there eventually. <laughs> I feel like I say that in every one of my videos. We get there eventually. <laughs> it should be my catchphrase for Animal Crossing and for life in general. Oh yeah, we get there eventually. <laughs> I really do be struggling with this here. Wow. It's been a little while since I filmed this footage, so watching it back, I just, I really do be struggling trying to place this tree. There we go. Finally. <laughs> Blimey, that only took, what, maybe about 10 minutes out of my life to do. I'm really enjoying using the hardwood trees on my island at the moment because obviously they're um, cherry blossom trees and I really feel like that just helps to kind of enhance the the, the Japanese theme if that makes any sense um, I feel like it does uh, when I when I see cherry blossom trees I definitely think of Japan um, 
and if any of you guys have also visited Japan like I have, uh, you will know exactly what I mean by that. Um, I think I should just make a compilation video of times where I'm struggling to place items and release that as a video. I think that would be enjoyable for people to watch. Because <laughs> it happens so often. And for some reason, Blanche likes to be all up in my business whenever I am making a video. Like, there are several times that I've been filming videos for you guys and Blanche has just decided to be up all in my business. Um, I like to think that that's her way of saying that she approves of what I'm doing, um, but I, I mean, we'll never know. Perhaps she's there to inspect it and make sure that I don't mess up <laughs> and do a bad job. And of course, I had to have the Tanuki statue outside of the shop that the Tanukis work at, because where else would I put it? Because <laughs> it makes a, such a funny noise when you kind of like press A and you like touch it in the game. It makes like a dunk kind of sound. Uh, if you have the raccoon figurine in your game, like touch it and you'll see what I mean. And also, riding bikes is uh, quite a big culture in Japan, so you'll find a lot of people will use bikes instead of driving a car, especially around Tokyo, um, because the road system in Tokyo is just absolutely bonkers. Um, and also, you know, it's better for the environment, so I'm glad that people do. Um, I can't ride a bike, fun fact. Um, <laughs> so um, whenever we go, we take the train or the bus because uh, I can't ride a bike. I'd love to learn how to ride a bike but I fear that I may be too old now. Um, I don't know, is there an age where you're too old to learn how to ride a bike? Something to consider. <laughs> but yeah, I like placing bikes kind of around the more quote-unquote city-like areas on my island because uh, there are bikes everywhere in Japan. There's always somewhere for you to park your bike. I was really struggling as to kind of what to do over on the left side here. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to put here because I'd already kind of done the little the little part like the bike area, and I wasn't sure. I, I was kind of toying with the idea of doing like a little shopping area, like with stalls that sells like knickknacks and stuff, and. But I was kind of worried that that wouldn't that wouldn't kind of go with the with the rest of my island. I was worried that like it wouldn't read like I guess Japanese enough. So instead, I decided to put a little kind of shrine or temple here with like a little sitting area and stuff. And I think that works well because even in this kind of built up areas um, around Japan, you will find beautiful pockets of nature, but also um, just really old shrines and temples that have been there for years and years and uh, like the city has been built up around the temple so you have these really beautiful like places of history and culture surrounded by like houses and shops and a city and it's like it is amazing, um, but it's not really something that you would find, like, in the UK, for example. I feel like our buildings just all kind of look the same. Even, like, the kind of older ones, kind of dating back to, like, the Victorian period, I feel like still kind of look similar to the houses that we 
like the modern houses that we have here. Yeah, that's one thing that I really, really love about Japan is that you can be in the middle of a city, you know, the middle of, say, Akihabara or Shinjuku, and you would find a little temple or a shrine or a park. And yeah, it would just bring you right back to nature and culture. And I think that's amazing. I'm such a nerd for stuff like that. Sorry, you had to hear me ramble on about that for so long. Anyway, I'm doing a temple by my next cranny because it kind of, that feels Japanese to me. So that's what I'm doing. I also wanted to experiment a little bit with these little single squares of dirt path with like custom designs put on top. I've seen a lot of people do things like this and I thought it looked really pretty. And so I wanted to try it on my island and I really like how it turned out and I've ended up using it kind of in lots of other places on my island too. So I was kind of stuck for a little while because uh, I was considering waiting until the trees had grown in to start decorating because um, I wasn't entirely sure what it would look like when all the trees were grown in. Um, but I had all the furniture with me and so I decided to uh, try my hand at decorating before the trees grew in uh, and then I could always tweak it afterwards if I didn't like how something looked or if something was being um, blocked from view um, and I end up doing that anyway. That is one tip that I would give to people who are doing island decorating is that if you're do doing a lot of decorating where there's lots of trees around, definitely wait until everything's like all the trees have grown in as much as you want them to grow in and then you can place items because otherwise some of your items might be just completely obscured by the trees that you planted and then I mean what's the point of having the items if they're hidden by the trees you know and honestly I think I ended up doing a lot of this kind of tweaking and stuff off camera because um I was getting a little bit like not stressed out but I was still really unsure what I wanted to do like right at the front here and I was fig fiddling around with this stone arch but like it wasn't going well and I wanted to wait for the trees to grow in uh, so you'll see the final product in a second. So yeah, like I say guys, here we are at the finished product. Um, I did all of the decorating of this lower bit off camera because I really wasn't sure what I was doing and I didn't want you guys to have to sit through me fumbling with the items and trees and stuff and such, so um, I didn't subject you guys to that. 
but just here on the left is a little train station um, with a JR East sign. And we've got a little picnic area, Kabuki's house, of course. And I used some of the uh, Mario mushrooms to kind of fill in the space, um, and I really like how it turned out. I think it looks really cute. And then if we go off to the right here, I also decorated this kind of area. Because Blanche is on this side, and she doesn't really have that much space. So I gave her a little bonsai shelf and some cherry blossom branches. Um, because I thought she should at least have something. <laughs> and then of course up here we have the shop and the little shrine too. I really like how this turned out. It kind of feels like hidden away um, by the trees. And obviously we've got this really beautiful, like I said, little pocket of culture there. So yeah, please feel free to let me know what you think of this speed build. Um, I would really appreciate any comments that you leave on my video. And if you could give me a like and a subscribe too, that would really help me out. I hope you guys are having an absolutely amazing day. I hope that you stay safe, that you're kind to yourselves. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.